Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and this is a place you have probably never heard of. It's called Abu Sir, which translates as Father of Fishes, but the original name, which is in Egyptian, is Bu Wizer, which means the land of Osiris. So it's probably designating one of the oldest sites in all of Egypt. And here we see lots of evidence of ancient cataclysms and ancient machining. This, for example, is a granite pillar, which originally was one piece of stone and was brought from the Aswan Quarry about 500 miles away. Then this, of course, is what's left of an obelisk that was originally one piece. And here we encounter the first of many drill holes that we're going to see. <clears throat> now some people think that these drill holes are modern, but that's not the case, because A, Abu Sir is in the middle of nowhere, there's no source of electricity, and it would require a huge core drill to be able to do this, and not simply a core drill, but a drill press. And as we'll see as the video continues, the penetration rate of the core drill is more efficient than a modern 21st century diamond drill. And there are probably more of these core drills located at Abu Sir than anywhere else in Egypt. Now we have a wall. The upper stone is limestone. The lower stone is basalt. Whether this is what it originally looked like or was a later addition is unknown, but it's likely a later addition because the megalithic aspects of the sites tend to be simply one type of stone. And here, once again, another core drill hole. And yet another. Now, if you see the striations, you can see that the feed rate or penetration was incredibly efficient. Again, more efficient than a modern diamond drill. There we have reconstruction, probably done during the 20th century. And look, yet another core drill hole. It could be that these were originally hinges in the original constructions. And then here we can see one that's broken. So you get a good look at, again, of the feed rate of the drill. And again, yet another. They're also strategically positioned. So the idea that these were samples taken by geologists is highly unlikely and almost definitely not done by archaeologists. And then once again, look at the feed rate. Incredibly efficient. We also see the blackening uh, and melting of some of the stone, like with this limestone. This would not appear to be a localized fire, but some type of ancient cataclysmic effect. And then we see more of it here with the darkening patches or darkened patches of the stone. And then the remains of ancient pyramids. Now, rather than simply being damaged by vandals, it does look like the surfaces literally blew off. And that is part of the theory of the ancient cataclysmic effects. And then we have an inner wall, which is quite crudely made, and an outer wall, which is megalithic and fits together astonishingly well. Again, this is limestone. You can see there's no mortar whatsoever involved. And because our tours are very special, we get access to places or aspects of sites that others do not. And here we're going into the core of the Abu Sir or Bu Wizard site, and we're going to see some more examples of very strange erosion effects. So once again, another door is open for us. And now we're in the ancient core of Abu Sir. Whoop, tripped over the door there. 
So look at the erosion here on these surfaces. Again, very much darkened. This is not the result of simple sand being blown by the wind, but more likely high heat. And this, <clears throat> this idea was backed up by our geologist who goes with us on every one of our tours. And here again, look at the excessive erosion. Not just the test of time, but of some massive heat event, possibly solar plasma ejection from the sun. And once again, more of these strange eroded surfaces. And since we're in the core, or more or less at the Holy of Holies of the site, this is where we see other megalithic aspects, such as these two giant boxes made of granite. This is the only way into the chamber or room where these boxes are located. And obviously there's no way that the boxes came through the, this narrow passage to get there. So it looks like the boxes were put there first and then the building was constructed around them. But I definitely believe that most of the construction we're looking at is dynastic Egyptian and that these boxes are pre-dynastic. So this box is broken, and you can see the inner lining is limestone, but the box itself is made of Aswan granite. And then here we see the one that is still more or less sealed. Look at the beautiful flat surfaces and the astonishing arc surface. And again, the flat surfaces, the beautiful arc, and no hieroglyphics whatsoever. And a further view. It would also appear that the box and the lid were made from one piece of stone, which is similar to what we see at sites like the Serapeum at Saqqara. Here's a member of our group, James uh, from Panama coming through. James has been on quite a few adventures with us. And again, beautiful flat surfaces and basically perfect arched um, curve there that you can see. And then this slab of stone, we haven't been able to positively identify what the material is. It looks sort of like basalt, but it's much denser. And here you can see the saw mark that was uh, left in the surface. And when we look at the profile, it's relatively even, but you'll see that it does waver, at least the top surface um, alters a little bit, and it would appear to have been cut by some kind of bandsaw. And when we apply some water, you can see that the saw went off course, at least temporarily. So again, very few tourists go here, very few visitors, because most people simply see piles of rock <clears throat> shattered and broken. But the devil, as they say, is in the details. So here we see a basin of some kind. It's made out of quartzite and was used uh, for water collection, but it's highly unlikely that that was its original purpose, and it does appear to have been turned on a lathe because it's perfectly circular. So again, lost ancient high technology. And then another surface here in basalt, you can see the striations of what was a massive, <coughs> excuse me, circular saw, about 20 feet in diameter and approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. We have no material in the 21st century that could accomplish that, not even tungsten carbide or cobalt steel. It's beyond that. Another cir uh, circle. And then here, eroded surfaces, again, that appear to be heat. And this is basalt. And then as we study in detail more, once again, you can see the surface is sloughing off, which is not 
the way that basalt naturally erodes. And here again, relatively obvious sign of excessive heat striking the surfaces. So rather than um, Abu Sir simply being a structure that was destroyed by conquering armies or civilizations, it appears to have been destroyed by a cataclysm. And once again, more machine marks, not modern. You can also tell that by the patina of the stone. If it was modern, it would have a slightly different shade. Again, almost everything here has been shattered and broken. It was, of course, used as a quarry, but I honestly believe that it was struck by some kind of cataclysm maybe 12,000 years ago. Scientifically, we know that there were a number of cataclysms that struck the earth at that time. And here, quartzite with scorch marks on it. So, in a following up episode, we're going to be going to the sister site of Abu Sir. And so, stay tuned for that. This is one of my latest books, Lost Ancient Technology of Egypt, Volume 2, at Amazon. Thank you.